All right, folks, we are going to check out a new starter today. Everybody's got, there's just all these starters, it's just starters everywhere. So we're going to look at a quick way to get a SaaS app, software as a service, up and running with authentication, subscriptions, language support, a bunch of other stuff, curtain rods, a fish. Maybe that's not funny. We'll see. So a starter helps you get an idea off the ground quickly. Uh, has a bunch of decisions that it comes with already made. So you can just focus on your idea. A good starter can go all the way to production. We're going to look at first Middays V1. The V1 template from Midday provides server actions from Vercel, database and authentication with Supabase, long running background functions with trigger.dev, and file storage and upload with Upstash. If I copy this command and run it in my terminal, it'll clone the repo and I can get started setting up services and getting things deployed. So the V1 starter from Midday is already pretty great. They've picked out some top tier services that handle the more complex parts of application development so you don't have to. Saving you time, Googling things, looking on Reddit, Stack Overflow, calling your mom. Yes, I know I can do whatever I'm trying to do on a $5 BPS. Can you just answer the question? But what if we could replace three or four of those services with one service? What if we had one backend service that handled all the backend things? We can, and that service is called Convex. So we've made Convex V1. Convex V1 gives you server actions with Convex. It's actually better than server actions because you don't have to use forms. It's just TypeScript that runs securely on the server. You get database and authentication from Convex. Not just any database, a database that makes it really easy to keep everything in sync. You get long running background functions from Convex if you need them. You usually don't, but you can. And you get file storage and upload with Convex. There's also a CLI for setting up the Convex v1 starter. It walks through environment variables, setting up services. Let's walk through it now. So here we're looking at the landing page for Convex v1.run. I'm gonna copy this command. Now note, as of the moment, we have this under my own personal account. So this is going to look different probably when you follow this video, just FYI. And we're gonna hop over here and paste. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. My V1 project sounds like a great name for a realistic thing that someone would do. We're gonna go ahead and create a new project. Um, my V1 sounds like a good name. All right, so it's setting up the convex project. Right here we're gonna set up convex off. So it's giving us the default site URL there, which is correct for local. Here it's giving you the correct URL for your dev convex deployment. So we'll just hit enter there. So here for Google authentication, it's explaining what's happening. It's giving you a link to a guide. And then also here's a little call out where it says use this as your authorized redirect URI. So um, we'll need that. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and click the link that it says to uh, follow for the guide. So this is Google's guide for setting up OAuth 2.0. Step one is to hit the Google Platform Cloud Console or the Google Cloud Platform Console, one or two. Um, we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. We'll call it uh, Convex V1. Don't need an organization. Bada boom. So we're gonna go to APIs and services. Right here it says credentials. On the credentials screen, we're gonna hit create credentials, OAuth client ID. First thing, if you haven't done this before, you're gonna, if you're in a project that you haven't set up Google OAuth for, you're gonna to have to configure the consent screen. So we're gonna say external so that people can use it outside of our org. That's the more complicated setup, so we'll walk through that. Um, apps name is Convex V1, user support email, you can just hit me directly if you have a problem with this application that millions of people are gonna use. No app logo, no app domain. We can skip all that because this is all for testing purposes. We're not gonna worry about this part. Developer contact, contact information, same thing. Save and continue. Don't need scopes. Uh, do we need scopes? 
So we'll just ask for publicly available info so we can get the avatar and that sort of thing update. We're going to hit save and continue. Uh, we don't need to add any test users. Good to go. Now, let's go back to credentials here. Let's try to create credentials again. OAuth client ID. We're going to say it's a web application. Web client one sounds great. Um, and then we can leave off authorized JavaScript origins for now because localhost just works. When you deploy your app and have it at a real publicly accessible domain, you're going to want to hit add URI and add that domain, but we don't need that for now. Authorized redirect URIs. This is the URI that after someone logs in with Google, Google is going to redirect back to this URI, and it'll only do that if the URI you provide is listed here. So we're going to go back here. We're going to copy that URL, paste it, and hit add URI. Actually, we don't have to hit add URI. We're going to hit create. It says it takes five minutes. I've never seen it take more than five seconds, but your mileage may vary. And here, don't hit OK. You can get back to it anyway, so I'll just hit OK just for those that accidentally do that. So you have a client ID here. Um, hit web client one. There's the goods. Client ID, we're going to go ahead and copy. And here it says enter the auth Google ID. And then it's asking for the auth Google secret. I'm going to copy that, paste it in. So it set both of those on your dev deployment. Um, and now Google Auth is all set. The next thing that we needed to set up Polar, Polar handles subscription billing. Um, we have a URL here. We're going to set up a project in the sandbox. And we're going to continue with GitHub. Authorized. We're going to give an organization name. B1 test already exists. Does this already exist? No. Let's see, so the steps here say uh, set up a creator account, find your organization ID in the Polar dashboard, sidebar under organization settings. There's our organization ID, I'm gonna copy that. Paste and enter. Create a webhook in the Polar dashboard under settings webhooks. We have some information about how we want it to be. Um, let's see, settings webhooks, all right. Not settings webhooks, it's over here. Um, add endpoint. This is the endpoint that we want to add. That goes here. Payload format's going to be raw. We're just going to generate a secret, copy it, and we're also going to set up subscription created and subscription updated um, as events. Hit create. And then we're going to go ahead and paste that secret here as well. We're going to need that in our convex deployment. And then generate a personal access token in the Polar dashboard under account developer settings. We have required permissions mentioned there as well. That's where we go up here and go to account. And developer settings. Personal access tokens. We're going to select uh, products, read and write, um, and we need to be able to, is it read? So yeah, it's read subscriptions, right? Yeah. And we'll set this. Okay, we all know we're going to hit that button. Let's not pretend that we're actually rotating things here. All right, copy. So we're going to copy our personal access token. All right, the rest of these are not required to actually get this running, um, but the instructions are there, so feel free to, to run through and set them up. But for our purposes here, um, we want to get to we want to get to up and running. So right now, it's creating placeholder products in Polar and it's seeding the database with Polar data. 
So it gives me a few instructions to run here. Um, we're going to CD into that. We're going to bun dev. And then as it says, we're going to hit localhost 3001. So you'll see there's a few different things running here. 3001 here is the website. 3000 is the web app. They're two separate applications. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hit the website. you hit sign in or get started either of those it'll go to the app which is taking a second on local we have our sign in with Google button and with polar you have to actually the user has to set up a free subscription so they're gonna get hit with this right away um, it just requires email it's a free subscription you hit subscribe and that should drop us back here I'm gonna give my username hit continue and we're in so this is all running now locally it's using uh, polar for subscriptions here um, I can upgrade to pro if I want and this is in test mode now that we're using the polar sandbox makes everything test mode so you can see this is legitimately fully interactive and working this link goes to their polar dashboard um, so this is like where you put the app here right you still have an app to make uh, but it provides a lot of the things that you're going to end up setting up yourself right, so i can update my avatar I stop at jordan meme i recently had to send someone so we'll make that our avatar there's a lot more to explore in the starter but all of that is beyond the scope of this video my name is sean urquhart i'm a member of the convex community I hope the starter is helpful for you. Can't wait to see what y'all build.